Um, imagine never paying rent. No power bills, no formal address, no bloody rates. Imagine sleeping in someone else's bed every night, eating their food, touching their animals. It's called house sitting, and Francie Stacey has been enjoying this easy, carefree lifestyle for the past six years. But is it really so easy and carefree? She joins me now. Francie, good morning to you. Good morning. So this is like five, six years you've been doing this now. Yes. You yeah. haven't paid anything for accommodation for that period of time. No. So you literally do live off the backs of others. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Do you, how does it feel when you switch lights on in that and you think, oh, amazing, how does that even work? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't really think about those things, really. It's just sort of something that um, I guess every house, when I'm house-sitting, it feels like my house, and even though I'm not actually paying for it, I, I don't know, I've never paid for it. And, so. of course, that is the key because that is why people give you their homes for free because they know they're in a safe pair of hands. Yeah. All right, so what service do you provide for people in return for free accommodation? Um, it's primarily looking after pets, so, um, you know, feeding the cats, walking the dog, you know, feeding the cats and dogs and looking after any animals um, and then just basically living in the home. So reduces the rate of, obviously, burglary and things like that because mm. you're making it feel and security in. is a big yep, one security. as well. Why wouldn't someone go to a friend? I mean, a lot of people do, but why would they choose you over, say, a friend? Um, I mean, some people do, but it's just more that I've been there and done that and I've, you know, I've You can be trusted. Yeah, I'm trusted. You can't always trust exactly, friends. yeah. And um, sometimes people feel like they're inconveniencing their friends, I, I guess, because friends are already also paying... Because this is a job, isn't it? I mean, it is a responsibility. Yes, it's not so yeah. much doing you a... Do you see it as people doing you a favour or you doing them a favour? I feel like it's pretty even split, right. mutually beneficial. So. How do you find... Because, I mean, obviously you've moved a lot of homes. You've moved countries as well. You've done this in, in England. You've done it here in New yeah. Zealand. How do you find the next home? Because the trick with this is dovetailing one in conveniently yes. after another. Yeah, so that's the tough part. So um, there's websites that I am a member of and that also, you know, homeowners are members members of and they you know when they list then I will get an email notification and I'll just email the ones that um, I'm available for and interested in um, and well, based on what what how do you judge whether you're interested obviously location yes, is important yeah, location um, just really availability is the key one so you know if I'm, I'm booked up you know, I, I may or may not be available. Yeah. So, do you, have you ever turned up at a home and thought, "Oh God, this is not up to my standard. <laughs> I'm not going to look after this complete mess." Yes, I have. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah. Well, you so turned basically... people down for free accommodation. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not not necessarily free, but I may or may you know, I may have a couple of inquiries, and I'll yeah. you have an, sort of an initial meeting before you've committed to anything, and um, and yeah, sometimes I just think yeah, it's not really the vibe I was going for, or yeah. You know, What's the worst thing that's happened where you've thought, "Oh God, they're not." going to like this. What's the worst thing that you've done? Um, like smashed a few glasses, I guess. But, oh, is that it? Um, well, Have you ever killed a pet? No. By accident, obviously. No, <laughs> but luckily, well, not luckily, but about two days before I went into a house set in London, the cat died. Oh, sure, that is lucky. I know, I was like, well, Because it was going to die. It would have been two yeah, days after. Exactly. I would have said to you, the cat was fine when we left. What have you done to our bloody cat? <laughs> um, oh, well, that's fantastic. How often do you do, how, how long are you going to do this for? You know, because sooner or later, because one of the things I know about you is you love houses. Yeah. Surely you're going to really love to have your own house. Yeah, well, the, the, the whole point initially before I went on my OE was to save for travel. Mm. And now that I've done my OE, I'm saving for a house. Um, but obviously, maybe not in Auckland at the moment yeah. with the prices. But, but you must have saved a lot of money not paying for accommodation for six years. Yeah. Well, when How I much? started, I How was kind of... How much have you of, saved? Uh, <laughs> well, I, st I saved enough to fund my, you know, two or three months through. I keep year, thinking, I think. thinking of extra questions. I was going to get rid of you ages ago. And I keep thinking <laughs> of extra questions. Like, one of the problems would be if you found a partner, because then all of a sudden the partner's got to be suitable to all of these people that own yeah. houses. Yeah, definitely. So is this something that you? it's much easier to do when you're single? Yes, or if you're already in a couple. Like, there's lots of house-sitting couples that, you know, market themselves as a couple to go in. So, it, yeah, it really depends on what the home is looking for. It's brilliant, Francie. That's a brilliant Thanks. way of... I still didn't find out how much you've saved, but obviously you're worth a bob or two, yeah? Probably <laughs> well, I spent, more than it, all. The I spent it all on travel, and oh, then now nice. I'm sort of resaving now. I just got back in November, so... You're investing it in yourself. Yeah. Which is good. Um, all right, Francie, thank you very much for joining us. Francie, uh, Stacey there, a professional, not so much professional, full-time house sitter because she does have a job as well. That's why she's worth so much money.